way, no way, no way. Good to see you, man. Yeah, good to see you Beautiful too. Day. Okay, Juan Brown, we're gonna fly on some rice seed pretty soon. Juan Brown, <laughs> can you just briefly introduce yourself? So Matt and I met through the Oroville spillway story. Matt, of course, relies on Oroville water right over here, and um, when I started covering the spillway story, I came across to Matt and his channel here and his connection, his critical connection to the water resources that are provided by from the Oroville spillway. We got together with the whole uh, aviation aspect of rice farming as well. And Juan, you're a pilot. Right. right, yeah, so I, my day job is a 777 pilot for American Airlines. Well, it was until everything went to pot here recently. Did somebody say pot? <laughs> no. So Matt, you got any positions open on the shovel out here in case this airline I got an, thing don't I work out? I always carry an extra <laughs> shovel, JB. I'm going to fly this field on pretty soon, so you just tell me what you want to do. Otherwise, okay. I got to do a few things for pops right now. Head on over there, and then I'll pick you up, and then we'll be, in, we'll be fine. Okay, sounds good. All right. right. Let's work. It's the 2020 crop year. My name is Matthew Sliger. That's right, we're out in California planting rice by air. Welcome to the rice fields. Ride with me from planting to harvest. This is California Rice, my friends. You're watching Rice Farming TV. So Pops wants me to add an inch board into the rice box to prevent an inch of water flowing out of this check, therefore building this check up an inch. All right, that's what he wants me to do, pretty simple. Taking out this four inch board and then this three inch board actually. Put in this six inch board. Now I've taken out only minus one and I need to add one. So this two inch board will give me plus one. Put the wedges back in. I'm good to go. Whoa, look at that. Big leak around the box. I wish JB was here to get the shovel. All right, hold on. Let me just explain what I'm doing here a little bit. As you saw earlier, there was definitely a leak going through the box. Then I saw a leak coming out the side of this, so I threw a bunch of dirt here to block it from going through the box and around. I think that worked, but now what I'm looking at on this other side, that's a lot of turbulence right around in there. So I'm kind of starting to think that there's water going under the box. I'm gonna have to get my hand down there and feel for that though. Yeah, there's like a three, even four inch gap under the front of this box. So I'm gonna have to throw a bunch of dirt in front of it. See if I can't stop all that turbulence which is coming from underneath the box. So basically it doesn't matter what we're doing here, how we're controlling the water here, because it has another pathway right under the box. Should have told Juan just to stay with me. Could have used the hand. I just threw a lot of dirt at it and it hasn't really stopped the turbulence whatsoever, meaning that the pressure is just too great. It's pushing any of this loose dirt that I'm throwing just right through and under the box. We're gonna have to revisit this later. Plus I need a break from shoveling. Hey, I did a lot of shovel work. I could have used you, man. Uh, Why don't you saddle up? I got some free time. We can go yeah. to the airstrip and find out. Yeah, you follow me or I'll follow you. Eat my dust, Juan Brown. Yeah, yeah I'll follow you. You know where you're going, right? You know, we can rip back over if they are. It'll take them a couple loads, maybe an hour to do all this. Yep. We might be able to get some nice access to the actual strip where they're loading and stuff. Yeah, I got a great shot of a great opening shot of them landing right over the top of my head. Oh, nice. So I see that field over there was already seeded. That was seeded yesterday. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And that field that we were, we met at was seeded yesterday as well. Uh-huh. 300 acres yesterday and only 28 today. So they must have been seeding all day yesterday. Huh? They sure were until the early evening. It was hard to say, but they did take that pause where we had all that wind and, and we didn't want them to fly. Yeah. Let's rock out. Not exactly sure why, but it's just kind of a cool feeling that Juan knows his way around the ranch so well. And he's... Uh, way ahead of me already. I'm driving at about 29 miles per hour and Juan must be going 60 miles an hour. Just uh, another velocity update here now that we've hit the paved road. I'm going about 65 miles per hour and Juan is no longer in sight and this road is essentially straight for miles. So I estimate him at around 120 easily. Okay, here we are. 
Williams Ag Service. Hey, JB. Am I going to get yelled at for speeding in the rice checks? <laughs> how fast were you going? This little thing? Oh, this little thing? Yeah, 500 cc's and it'll cruise at 80 miles an hour. And so that's what you were doing? Yeah, and then it'll straight away. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to get on the airstrip right now, okay? Are you buckled up? Uh, in case we gotta do it. Dude, fa race, please man. fasten your seatbelts before takeoff, JB. Man, you are getting lazy. I'm gonna drop Juan right off where he requested. <laughs> right here? <laughs> You're gonna get me out of your hair real easy, aren't you, Sligar? Wait, what do you see, Juan? I finally found something I can be about the same height as Matt Sligar. <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> it's just a block. This is the boneyard. Yeah, the boneyard. There's some old exhaust stacks from the old 985 1340 radial engines that they used to run before they went all turbine. There's the fuselage structure built like a dragster. It makes these things incredibly strong and durable. How do you know all this stuff, JB? That's all I ever did as a kid for 50 years, man. Is airplanes, airplanes, airplanes. How do you know everything about farming? All you ever did, right? Yeah, I guess when you put it like that. Yeah. Hey, he's talking about farming. Let's look at some rice seed. Yeah. So Juan, there are seed growers, right? And yep. we order the seed from them. We need to tell the seed grower, hey, start soaking our seed, then call the airstrip and say, hey, expect our seed in about 24 hours to be flown on. We soak the seed to start the germination process. Okay. There's a treatment as well to kill off fungicides or just uh, bugs. bugs. Yeah. yeah, whatever, all kinds of stuff. What if there's a change in the schedule? What if the winds are out of limits above 15 knots and all of a sudden you can't then we will call the seed grower and say, please don't take the water off the seed. Don't deliver it yet. We're gonna wait until maybe the afternoon or the next day. We'll then also call the airstrip and say, hey, we're not delivering the seed yet. Can we get on the schedule for tomorrow or later in the afternoon or whatever it may be? The seed can stay soaked for a day or two and it'll be fine. Yes, you don't wanna go more than two days. Business. It's germinating, the seed is creating heat. So you wouldn't want it germinating all scrunched together inside of set of doubles. So this is seed, this is a... Uh, Let's take a look. Let's yeah. take a look and we'll find out exactly what this is. It's M205 rice. Here's the plane now. It's gonna happen right here. Come on over this way, JB. Hold on to your hat, JB! Fully loaded. He's getting taken a bit of runway. So let's check out how they load up that hopper in the loader truck. Here they're filling the loader truck hopper so that the loader truck can fill up the airplane once it gets back to the strip. That's one hopper full. That'll fill the plane. Man, how much does that some bitch weigh? We can ask right here. 2,800 pounds. About 2,800 pounds, JB. Holy smokes, that's a good load. That would cover, you say, about 10 acres? Yeah. 2,800 pounds. Every farmer has their own. Their magic formula, they're very yeah. Good. Ah. yeah. Let's take a look at the seed. This is the wet seed that they're moisture so to the top. adding weight. A lot of weight too to your aircraft. That's right. Nice and clean. The crazy thing about this one yeah. is if we were to mill this down, take the yellow hole off of it, make brown rice or even the bran to make white rice. Yeah. This is the same stuff people are getting in the grocery store. The difference is it's been cared for over the winter. It, the germ has been preserved. So it's still a viable seed and we can plant it and we're seeding about 165 pounds per acre in our operation yeah. and we're harvesting usually around 10,000 pounds. So each one of these is going to create a whole lot more. And by preserving the germ, that's where you're keeping the husk on it basically? Is that what you're saying? The husk needs to stay on it. Yeah. It needs to be stored at a particular temperature. Yeah. Ah. All that stuff. And that seed rice is grown right here. Came from out of here. And last season that's correct so the gentlemen that were loading the planes earlier are now inside the set of doubles and they're kind of sweeping rice off the edge inside so that it'll load quickly everything is about timing speed whether the applicator in the plane is flying on the seat quickly obviously but once they land here they're getting filled up and can take off just as fast pilot wasn't gone for more than 10 minutes and he's back already and that's the cycle load the hopper Load the plane, fly on the seat, come back, hoppers loaded, fill the plane again and again and again. Lots of action out here. Detail behind the scenes, look just how quick these guys hustle all day long doing this in and out and keeping it a safe operation with all the practices that they've got going on here. It's just amazing. Yeah, a lot of traffic over here, huh? Yeah, busy, busy. 
be interesting to talk to them, see how they manage that. I assume it's sea and avoid, and with the help of uh, radio unicom type communication, a little bit of coordination here and there. Fortunately, these guys fly so low that there's very little other aircraft traffic they got to worry about. Of course, the big hazard here is that you see out there power lines and all that sort of thing. The neat thing, unlike firefighting, is these guys, they know your field, and they know the local wires, and they know where everything is, and unlike fighting fires, it's nice and straight and level terrain that you're working with all the time. As opposed to firefighting, you're always thrown into a low-level situation in a completely new and unknown environment with constantly changing conditions with smoke and that sort of thing. But these are the only two real low-level flying operations that are truly low-level. Very interesting how one drew the parallel with firefighting and being the only other low-level flying. Uh, never really considered that. That's why it's such a pleasure to have out Blanco Lirio himself. Hello? I gotta pick up my pop, so I will drop you back off at your motorbike. Well, JB, let's head over to our field and watch the plane fly seat on over there. What do you think about that? That'd be awesome. Let's just wait right here, though, while we <laughs> allow this fella to come in and land. Now he's got spades on his aileron. Wait, 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 wait. He's got what? <laughs> he's got spades on his ailerons. Look like little shovels. They look just like little uh, spade shovels. They're about the same size, too on his ailerons that helps lighten the control forces as that spade scoops up a little bit of air when you want to deflect an aileron into the wind to start your turn that spade will scoop a little air and add a little assistance to the deflection of that aileron and take the load off of the fatiguing all day long of yanking and banking and turning and burning wow dude yanking and banking turning and burning that's what these guys are and, doing and el, el, the hustle is an gone. aileron and an aileron is that thing when you see in, in commercial pilots uh, that thing that kind of folds down on wings the aileron is the is the lateral control of the aircraft via the wings right it's yeah okay doop, 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 up there on the wings not right. the flaps but the ailerons they oh right, the yeah. ailerons yeah yeah that's the roll control that's what's allowing you to do these uh, bank turns all the time and the spades are helping you relieve the uh, strain of doing that repetitive over and over and over. It makes the controls nice and light. Look at that. You know what airplane that is, Schlagart? What? That was a Myers 200. That is the world's fastest four-seat production aircraft. Very rare airplane right here in their hangar at Biggs. Wow, I didn't know that. Amazing aviation phenomenon right here underneath your nose. You've been walking past all these years. Well, I've been shoveling, JB. <laughs> Up the smart end of the shovel, that's fine. <laughs> All right, JB, I'll see you later back over at our fields, okay? okay. See you there. Where's Blanco? One part ammonia, two parts nitrogen. Does that sound correct? And it's dangerous stuff. And I found the letter too from uh, folks at Cal Amco, yeah. Okay, so what Juan's been talking about here is well, he's been doing some research on aqua ammonia shortage here in California. Aqua ammonia is a uh, completely nitrogen that we use as a fertilizer in our rice fields. Well, they're not able to provide us enough this year because you read the I'll story. Give the update you here. give me the update, JB. Straight from the president of Cal Amco, Dan Stone. He says, dear Cal Amco shareholder, Cal Amco started shipment allocations on anhydrous ammonia, that's fertilizer without water. Effective Friday, April 24th, we expect to return to normal shipment operations on May 8th. So, Matt, you've been receiving rations, basically, right? Correct, yes. Partial shipment. In other words, let me just to clarify, mm -hmm. a lot of our fields that are ready for fertilizer have not been fertilized for several days and are just sitting there, so our progress has been halted dramatically. So it's delaying the whole growing season right now. The inbound supply ship scheduled for arrival in Stockton on April 27th and 28th is delayed at its interim stop at Fertinal, Mexico, due to plant operational issues. Now we can only assume what those issues are, but they probably have something to do with COVID-19 and not having the correct amount of folks or number of folks or critical stuff that needs to be handled with great care and you gotta have uh, individuals that are qualified to handle it. The ship cannot depart Mexico for Stockton until it unloads enough product to allow it to sail up the San Joaquin River. Now the San Joaquin River is a deep water channel that goes from the San Francisco Bay into Stockton where Calamco is located. That deep water channel it needs to get dredged out. It can't handle the weight of a fully laden ship without running aground even at high tide. 
I suspect is what the problem is. That waterway needs to get dredged periodically and it's been quite a few years since it's been dredged and they've got requests for proposals for folks to dredge the waterway. So the ship cannot depart for Stockton until it unloads enough product to allow it to sail up the San Joaquin River. They're unloading about half the ship in Mexico. Well, here's so what that they're, they're saying. They're saying our supplier sent a second ship from Trinidad on April 23rd, which is due in Stockton on May 7th. Oh. So I assume that that ship is loaded correctly to handle the Stockton deep water channel. It's not so full so it can make it up the waterway. It can waterway. make it up there without running aground. Cal Amco is also acquiring additional anhydrous ammonia from other sources during the ship delay. So it sounds like they're working the problem, but it's delaying everything till May 8th. That's what, nearly a month now for you? Yeah. And so give, give us the review on the timing on how that impacts your operation, because it it ends up impacting you at the end of the harvest season, right? That's right. So as you've seen, a lot of fields have been seeded here around our ranch. And now that the front half of our crop is in, the back half of our crop has been delayed due to this fertilizer shortage. So that means we're going to have this window in planting. Front half of the crop has been seeded at a regular pace. Back half has been delayed. That means this window is going to carry into harvest. And as our planting dates are delayed, it means our harvest dates are gonna go longer into the fall. And we run the risk, of course, fall rain starting in October, which means then we can't harvest our crop so what was otherwise a normally dry spring, which allowed us to get into the fields on a timely, normal manner, because of course the last couple of years we've had very wet springs and were delayed and had this same problem in the fall. Well, now the same problem is going to happen this year, except we didn't have the spring rains. We had a lack of fertilizer due to however you would define this problem with this company getting, what's it called again? Ammonia. And hydrous ammonia, a component for aqua ammonia, which we need to put on as fertilizer. So we definitely are getting delayed. We run the risk of now being late harvest. And if it rains on us, we can't harvest. Then we get into all kinds of other issues, yield loss, poor quality of the rice. Even though we had great weather, Something else happened and delayed our crop getting put in. You gotta have the optimism of an astronaut to be a farmer, man. You're just up against so many different variables. Totally, it's, and it always is something and it's always a surprise. And of course, I think this letter to the shareholders of Calamco, I mean, we can only assume he's being very optimistic in this May 8th date as well. I'm sure logistically, how, it's pretty accurate. Realistically, but, how far could you delay this? Well, no one would want to plant in June. Right. So you may be thinking May 8th, oh, no problem. Well, this is just the fertilizer application. After we apply the fertilizer, we need time to flood the fields. And then of course, fly on the seed. Now the Ag Pilots and Williams Ag Service, they're of course, once the fertilizer shows up, going to be severely impacted and they only have so many planes, but all of a sudden all the farmers have the fertilizer, they're ready to start flooding, they ready to get their seed flown on. So there's gonna be some impact just because of the consolidation. The compression of, of the schedule. The right, schedule. because right now all the farmers are doing their soil work and they're all getting caught up to the same point, applying the fertilizer. That means they're gonna be flooding the fields at the same point. That means they're going to be flying on their seed at the same point. That means in the fall, they're gonna be harvesting at the same point. Long lines at the dryers delivering rice. Trucks aren't gonna get back. We're gonna to have to stop the harvesters. So we're getting into all kinds of potential issues here. Fertilizer application is done by tractor. Correct. And it, that's not done by you. It's done by the company. Some farmers do apply their own fertilizer. We do not. We hire that out to another farmer who has a custom fertilizing application rig and he comes in and applies the fertilizer. That's why you occasionally see John Deere's on the Rice Farming TV channel. That's Mike Job and his outfit who that applies- That directly injects the fertilizer into the soil. Yes, this aqua ammonia that we're talking about is applied by what's called an aqua bar and the aqua bar injects it about three inches deep into the soil. And that is all nitrogen, this aqua ammonia. We apply 135 units of nitrogen. And then after that, we'll roll on a fertilizer blend, which which isn't the issue right now. It's the aqua ammonia, which is the issue. We do two applications. One, one, three inches deep for the okay. roots mm -hmm. later in the season. And in a surface level application, which we call a starter fertilizer, which as soon as the seed hits the water and hits the soil, it starts taking that in and gives it a good boost 
as soon as it's applied. And none of that is done by aerial application. That's all done by tractor. You mm. can do it aerially. It's ideal to do it by tractor because you are just insured an even application of the fertilizer. With an airplane flying high above the fields, with the wind blowing, you can have some fertilizer drifting from one side, meaning you're gonna get some hot spots and some low spots for the fertilizer, and you're going to have a pretty ugly looking crop because you'll have some plants taller than others. Nice, even. Yeah, we want that nice, even rice field. But... Everything doesn't fall into place. It's boom or it's bust. And that's about it, huh? That's the current situation with planting right now. And we are in the shop waiting for our field to be flown on, which should be any minute now. You see the rest of the air show here, Schlager. That's what I come down for. I know, air show time. Let's go. Here he comes. Come on, JB. Here he comes. Over here, JB. Over here. We're going to get rained on. Awesome. Golden what? <laughs> Golden light bombs yeah, of golden yep. Golden bombs of light and love. Golden bombs of light and love. What do you think, man? You like that kind of spread right there? Yeah, usually he'll do another border pass right along, but I think he got right up to the edge of the field. Actually, what we'll do is we'll drive around the field and we will just look to see if we can see seed on the road. Someone might assume, hey, they got seed on the road. That's a bad thing. It should be in the field. Well, if it's on the road, that means it's in the field. Good. So that's a good thing. Good thing. And our seeding rate, that 165 pounds an acre, mm -hmm. that is in mind that we want them to have a little bit extra play with. So go ahead, fly the side of the road, hit the side of the road. We got plenty of seed. We want a good thick stand out there. So we don't mind seeing a little bit on the road. <laughs> Did you catch any? I, yeah. I think I caught one. You can feel the moisture on the rice. Yeah, that's right. The neat thing too is he doesn't need to get really low altitude on this seeding. He wants to stay up broadcasting it. No, that's right. And soaking the rice also helps with that, right? Because we it were talking. It out yeah, we were talking about how it helps the germination process start already, but it also adds, of course, weight to the rice kernel. That's going to help it drop straight down and, of course, sink too. If you get a less than 24 hour soak, like a 12 hour you soak, don't want any floaters. you don't want any floaters and you can get that. Pops has the joke, they flew the seed on upside down. <laughs> so Juan, is this the first rice field that you've seen seeded? Yeah, it is. This is awesome, yeah. yeah. They're up a higher altitude than I thought they would be for ricing, but now it makes sense now that you can see the weight and the size of the rice to get it broadcast out there to the correct distance yeah to spread it out it's cool to watch him working with the wind from a technical standpoint as a pilot, pilot you mean yeah. yeah he's using his gps i think you covered this in one of your updates there yeah and he's got a box on the panel there and that's his flagger basically and he's able to line up every well i don't know what what do you think each i think it's was? 30 feet 30 foot yeah and accurately fly that line all the way down the line yeah. But I wonder how much he, does he add for windage on that? If he's got a little bit of a crosswind, does he slide it one way or another, or does he just take a no wind cut at it every time and let the wind do its thing? If I had to guess, I would imagine he just stays his line yeah. so he consistently gets carryover due to the wind, mm -hmm. and then maybe, based on where the wind is coming from, make an extra pass on the side where the wind is, is blowing. Gotcha. Does that make sense? And that's where the spotter, wherever he is, maybe can fill him in on that and then fill in any gaps. Right. That might have been created by the wind. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. makes it a lot easier than, than trying to guess the wind and, right. and put any windage into the equation. And it's also pretty amazing how the wind can shift. I mean, already, just from See? us talking, it's died down yep. considerably. Yeah, yeah. So if he was accounting for the wind on a few passes, he'd also need to know, hey, uh, discount now yeah. for the lack of wind. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. You're watching Juan Brown on Rice Farming TV. Rice seeding. Hey, Bob Wharf, what's going on? Aren't you drilling somewhere? Probably Pretty awesome can. hearing Juan talk to all of his like people who are show. tuning in on his live hey, feed. We got the PT-68. Let's flip this around here real quick. Juan's bike. Juan's biking jacket. Look, look. Some rice seed has fallen on it. Juan's got a little bit of rice everywhere. Yeah. All right, folks. We covered a lot of information with my dear friend, Juan Brown. We're signing off for today. I got to get to work. Juan Brown's probably going to do some more investigative journalism, some reporting. Thanks for visiting. All right, man. Well, it's always a gas to come down here. Such a treat to see this for the first time. Aerial application of rice seed. 
I think Pops is going to be on our tail here for goofing off on the YouTubes. When yeah, should be working. yeah, that's right. That's right. We got things to do, but hey, we're getting seed on the field, so that's a sigh of relief. That means a lot of hard work is now over. So Matt, keep us posted on how all this timing works out on your channel there with the fertilizer and everything else that's going on. Will do, definitely. And check out the Blanco Lirio channel for all things aviation, engineering, fun, and, <laughs> and, and what else? Yeah, yeah, motorcycles. I mean, motorcycles. <laughs> get that cup of coffee. Well, dude, hey, I, I guess I didn't get that cup of coffee either. <laughs> You were the one that came in from town. Yeah, that's a townie. Uh, speaking of town, Gridley looks like quite the burgeoning metropolis nowadays, and I see they even got a Starbucks, and I just got to wonder, do rice farmers really drink Starbucks? Do you, Matt? Do you go to Starbucks? Well, I, I tell you what, if they do, they, they order it and dump it into their thermos and throw the cup away. They don't have time to sit around and nah, browse the internet. They're, they're, no, no, they're not the coffee shop culture. They're not walking around well, town probably showing off. probably 32 bucks worth of Starbucks coffee to fill up your thermos, so I suspect the average rice farmer don't do that. Nah. All right, checklist complete. You got everything buttoned up, zipped up, zipped up strapped down? Up rolled up. That, is that you on the sticker of your helmet? Oh, that's the Coog. The Coog makes sure I don't get in any wrecks, tickets, Who's the Coog? Ken Kugel from Southern California. Later, Juan Brown. Okay, we'll be back. See you here. And there he goes, Juan Brown, standing up on his motorbike, speeding away. Thanks, Juan Brown, for coming out and visiting me during this super exciting time of the year, seeding our rice fields. Hope you all out there enjoyed. Take care. And hey, again, check out Juan Brown's channel down in the description if you're not familiar with the great work that he does. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Watch your six, JB, watch your six. I got my hat on. Hold on to your hats, JB. Yeah.